Hey, today we're gonna talk about Fanica and how to speed up your process. We're gonna look at changing some of the default settings that Fanica gives you, and I'm gonna help you set up your library the way it should be for the most effective editing you can do. What Fanica does, it tries to bring everything together into one file which is the library. What we are gonna do essentially is just take some of those files out of the library so that later on we can delete them. A problem that I had with Fanica when I started editing was the incredibly large files that I would create from the library. I didn't know what to do because those were massive files, sometimes 100, 200 gigabytes. That was just not feasible to keep all those files. So with this workflow, ideally you be cutting that out massively and you would only be keeping your library itself and the footage that you need. So you open up Fanica, we'll go file new library. Let's, you should have a template or a kind of a folder set up that will give you the most flexibility. In here, we're gonna go into a folder called library. Let's call this uh, test number one and save great you just uh this is a default library that Fanica does we don't need that we're gonna look at the library folder and here is our project right now is a 181 kb and this is what Fanica does now whatever you do into Fanica, they're gonna render inside if you need um proxies or if you need transcoding all those files be inside Fanica, which can be useful but is not what you want you want to take them out of this so that later on you can delete them selecting the library we're going to go to modify settings so we want to change media choose we want to go make sure we go inside the same folder what i like to do is just place these inside the same folder. So technically we'll be taking from inside the library to just the same folder as the library. And catch it. What catch it is, is technically just the render of the software. What Fanica does really well is render as you're editing. So you never need to set the software to render. It does it by itself, but it creates a file inside itself so it creates a file inside the library what we're doing here is technically asking Fanica to do the file outside that library and the reason why we're doing that is so that once we're done with the editing we can delete that file which is just a render it's not the edit it's not the footage that won't change anything the only difference is that if you ever decide to open that project again you only need to leave time for the software itself to render the file that you're dealing with it's a great way to speed up the process because you're not overloading your hard drive and also a way for you to store these projects and files if you ever decide to work on them later on so you see this file over here that's the catcher that we just spoke about this suddenly becomes a file on the outside Another thing that is really important when you're trying to speed up your process is to work with proxies. By creating proxies, you're creating lower versions of your files, which you can then take it to edit much faster. And then just before exporting those files, you just relink them to the original file. What Final Cut does so great is that that doesn't really take much work. Okay, we'll go import media. Let's just pick a file. When you're here, you want, what you want to do is make sure this is selected, create proxy media. And what's that going to do is now, well, the video is here. So I create a project. Okay, we go on view and we have quality here. We have best quality, best performance, and then media, optimize, original, or proxy. You want to either be editing your best performance, which is slightly lower quality than the video itself. So what the software is doing here is it's trying to make you work with a little less quality within your files, because that's how you should be editing. You should be working with lower quality files so that you can take the most out of the software. But truly the best way you should be editing, you should be choosing proxy. Once you click on proxy, suddenly the videos become less quality. We'll go back here to the library folder. Now we have this folder over here, which is Fanica Proxy Media, which is technically Fanica just recreating 
the video you have in there into a lower version of itself. So if we go here, we can see that this video now is 19.3 megabytes, which originally was 20.3. In this case, it's not a drastic change because this is a small video to begin with. But when you're working with footage from your camera, if you're working with 4K and all those things, it makes a lot of difference. I personally like to set up my library and set up the proxies ahead before I start editing so that the computer has time to, to read it all and to create proxies out of everything. This is a great workflow if you're deciding to work with a new editor as well. Instead of sending them original footage, an incredibly large library, you would only be sending them these two files, the proxies and the tests, because what you would do after is just grab their library, come here, and then just reconnect that to the original files. And simply by clicking original, you're relinking them to the original versions of themselves. And once again, they're the best quality. So whenever you're done with your project and you submit it or you post it or you did whatever you wanted to do with it, you can always come here and delete the catch it file and the proxy folder. And this one, depending on the size of your project, this might be a ridiculous number which is how you're gonna save so much space. Keeping this, the library itself and then the f original footage, that would help you have just the bare minimum that you need to actually have the edit that you made without all this backlog of memory being wasted with render saved. Uh, but that's all. I hope this is helpful for you. When I found out about these things, it really changed my workflow. And I can work either from a computer or from a laptop and find out it just works. The software just does what it's supposed to do and I barely ever have any problems unless I'm actually dealing with raw files or anything like that. I hope this was helpful for you. This was something that when I learned, it really helped my workflow and helped me do better jobs. Uh, this could be really great, especially if you work out of a laptop or a hard drive that is not too fast or too big. It can help you manage the storage or just working with proxies. Something that I would suggest as well, if you don't have too much space or if you want to add it straight from your laptop, is maybe make these files in a hard drive and then just copy the library and the proxies into your computer. You, can, you don't need anything else to edit them. You just need to bring them back into the hard drive whenever you want to export the file so that you can relink to the original file. This will give you a lot of flexibility and push for your content to be better because you are editing as fast as you can, meaning that you can do a lot more with your time. If you like filmmaking and you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, consider subscribing. And that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.